Council, welcome. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Live long. Thank God bless you. Live long. God bless you. So, Thank you so much. So this is not a, a rare sight to behold, especially in Accra when it rains. People right. have floods in their homes. Their gadgets are destroyed. And this lady says, look, I feel my life is threatened. I want to move out. First of all, is she right in wanting to move out of an apartment she signed a deal to stay in for two years? Indeed, um, she is right to, to take steps to move out, indeed, to save life and property. Um, first of all, because um, the tenancy is a contract. Right. And these events, once they are occasioned, mm. they frustrate the continuous performance of the contract. Okay. And so by virtue of that, the contract will naturally have to come to an end. Okay. And um, a very decent landlord might probably refund everything to you, but that is not legal. Mm. At best, she's supposed to take out what, um, the period of time that you have stayed okay. and give you the rest of the mm. amount involved. Otherwise, um, she cannot insist that you live in there unless, unless okay. these are two main conditions. Mm. At the time that you were moving in, okay. you probably made an inquiry okay. into the flood situation in the area. Mm. And this is very important because in Ghana, at least now we can take it for granted that almost every part of this country gets flooded right. considering the kind of leaders we have. Right. And so if you have to take steps to protect your own life mm. and property. And so if you do not do that, I mean, you may be shooting yourself in the foot in the mm. long run. And so if you do indeed take steps to make the inquiry into whether or not the place is flood prone, and you are given all the assurances mm. and the guarantee by the landlord, that indeed this area is not this, is not as other places, mm. and so I mean because it has never flooded and 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 give you all the assurances. Mm. Now these representations would then can then be used against the landlord in let's, case it happens in future. Let's look at the ingredients of a valid contract. Absolutely. Offer acceptance, acceptance in between. You have consideration Absolutely. and the ability to deliver on the promise. Absolutely. Correct. Absolutely. So now I come to you and I say, I want your apartment. We agree. Sure. I make you an offer. You accept. I Absolutely. consider. I look at the space and everything. I say, I like this. Surely. How then do I do a U-turn when the contract is not ended? When, in fact, and most tenancy agreements don't have the exit clause in there. Absolutely. Where, where, where does she stand? Exactly where frustration comes in. Mm. And with an issue of frustration, it does not necessarily need to be spelled out in the body of the contract. If an event makes it impossible for the continuous performance of a contract, mm. that contract gets terminated. Okay. And once a contract gets terminated, usually everybody will take his losses. Mm. But in this particular case, in this particular case, the most reasonable thing to do would be to refund the un unexpired period. In, in this case, she has lost her microwave, she has lost her fridge, her mattress. You saw, I mean, it could never be used again. So, will she be? Will she? Must she demand for a deduction of the value of these gadgets and other property that she lost? As a sadly, of the you plan? can never have those ones. Why not? Um, sadly, um, a tenant is required, is required, not compulsorily though, to have all the items, in fact, everything in his apartment mm. insured. Okay. The landlord's obligation under our laws is to only insure the property. Okay. And that insurance could be either in the form of um, 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 flood, okay. fire, mm. or burglary. Okay. But the tenant's obligation is with everything within okay. his apartment. Mm. And so if you do not take any steps to ensure the items in your apartment, and whether by way of fire or by way of flood or some other natural disaster, you happen to lose everything in your room or your apartment, sadly, that is on you. Mm. The liability of that is on you. The, the question you raised about insurance comes to me strongly. How many of our apartments are insured, by the way? As a matter of fact, you should <laughs> be asking mm. how many of our property okay. is even insured. Mm. Because even though the law requires that particularly commercial property okay. be insured, that's the requirement of the law. Mm. But time and again, what you would identify is that it is only these high rising buildings normally within the proper locations that mm. are somewhat insured right, right and mostly because those ones are easily identifiable as mm. commercial property mm. particularly those occupied by um corporations mm. and other things mm. it's easier because you can easily target the companies okay. and then get them insured but my three-bedroom house that i've rented to to other persons 
I mean, nobody really cares whether or not it is insured. But really, it is something that we should all be looking out for. Mm. We must, as tenants, be interested in whether or not the property has been insured. Because we, as for the items in your room, okay. but unfortunately, this, 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 this is a trick. The items in your room, whether or not it has been insured, mm. will not be, I mean, if the landlord insures it the property, not, it, will not be it will not be covered. Okay, so, oh, so you're see? saying that if so? this building had been insured, uh, where it got flooded, yes. the lady in question or whoever is a victim could possibly have gotten a full refund? Is that it? That's not what I'm saying. Okay. I am saying well, that if she, had, if she had insured her room, okay. her apartment, mm. and the items in there, mm. then she would have complete refund. Okay. Of course, depending on the, um, the kind of condition. contract mm. okay. that she entered mm. into. She mm. would have complete refund of everything. So as it stands now, what options are available so to her? As she it wants stands to move. Now. The, landlord, the landlord or landlady says, you can't move. We had a contract two years. What remedy does she yes, have? Unfortunately, um, it is very sad to always preach this to the courtroom because really this is a common sense somehow sometimes mm. for yeah. us to understand that once a contract has been frustrated, I mean, being human and being reasonable, uh, one would expect that minimum, the period of time unexpired should be refunded to her. That is, right. that is the most reasonable thing to mm. do. But it will shock you that some of these things might end up in the courtroom for a court to pronounce upon it. Okay. But if that is the case, then oh, that ought to be the matter. I mean, that ought to be the matter before the court. And I can mm. say with almost 90% 90, 90 certainty that she would have a greater portion of the unexpired term of, of, of her tenancy. What, what do you advise for people who live in flood-prone areas uh, in these times? Somebody said that, well, if you're going to hire or, or buy a land, you must go when the rains are, are here so that you're able to identify which areas are flood prone. What do you advise? I think it is a good advice, but it's, it really does not really save you from anything because really sometimes your area may not be flooded. It may not be flood prone today. I mean, I mean flood prone today. Mm. However, tomorrow because of that building and because of that gutter that, was, that has not been constructed, mm. because of that road that is so bad, mm water from elsewhere okay. end up in your apartment or in your house and you cannot really have where, your... Where does she and go so, to get help? I mean, for this particular lady, mm. the best place is to, to go to court because she can't do it otherwise. Um, the tendency is to always think that uh, maybe the um, rent control might be able to help, but right. they don't have that authority to order the landlord to refund your money to you. They don't have the authority to refund. They are, they are, they are more of settle, settling, okay. I mean, negotiating, I mean, I mean, more or less. Mm. I mean, they don't have that coercive power okay. to do what, in fact, as a matter of fact, if you don't follow the orders, they can't do anything than to go to court. And mostly they will not even go to court with you. They will just give you the processes. I mean, they will file the processes at the court, and then you would have to do your follow-up. Wow. So if so I have really a matter, for example, and, and I go to court, and yes. I go to the rent control department, yes. you're saying that they don't have the teeth to bite, so they will have to beg and appeal to the conscience of whoever? No, they don't beg. They normally would make an order. Okay. But if the order is flouted, I mean, if it is, if it is not but accepted... But if you make an order and it is flouted and you don't take any... So, uh, which is why they would then forward... Measure. No, they would then forward the entire docket okay. to the district court, okay. the district mag magistrate, mm. who would then have to take a decision. And that becomes a completely new hearing altogether. Okay. And okay. They would, she would then, uh, the district magistrate would then have to determine the merits or otherwise okay. of, the, of, the, of the orders or recommendations mm. made by the rent control officer. Um, and the parties would be here okay. on the on the merits of the matter. Th this is this is just uh, for a house or an apartment. Surely, let's broaden the scope a bit and look at the community, absolutely, uh, which is managed by sub metro or district assembly, absolutely. Um, and we remember yesterday, June three, that four years after. Is it four years already? Yes, four years already, 2015 to 2019. Yeah, wow. What remedies are available to them as well? Because the floods came, it destroyed their stuff. And up to now, not a single person has been held responsible. Yeah, for, for, for the June 3rd victims, there are different, different remedies that are I'm available. I'm talking about those whose homes were destroyed by the floods um, because, well, some gutter somewhere, some building, a waterway, these, these conditions. Exactly the point I was making. That depend, you, there, there, there's no single remedy for everyone. Okay. Everybody would have his own remedy, separate and different from, distinct from the other. Mm. For instance, if yours was because maybe your district assembly refused to construct the gutter, okay. and you can directly link the flooding in your apartment or your house okay. to the non-construction of that gutter, okay. then you may be able to rely on that okay. as a cause of action against your district if that is available okay. to you. Um, if in other way, if yours was because maybe that man constructed his house 
um, 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 blocking the waterways. Okay. Then you cannot hold your, well, I mean, you may be able to hold your district assembly responsible together in conjunction with that man, that man okay. who was given the permit to build in the first place. Okay. But you may as well identify later that he probably didn't even have a permit, okay. but he was allowed to build, right. which makes matters even more worse for right. both parties. Mm. But that is being the district Allow, assembly allowed sleeping and on person, job. sleeping on your job. Mm. That mm. makes you even more liable. Mm. And so, so long as you can identify that indeed these were the causes, direct causes of the flood in your place, then you can't rely on that mm. to mount a legal action mm. against your assembly and the man that built on the waterways mm. and all other persons who probably might have contributed. For instance, that man who has his, um, uh, what's it called, um, uh, a filling station, right. for which reason your house probably got mm. burned. Okay. Also, through the same rain, okay. if you can link it directly to okay. yours, if you're able then to establish. You, once you can establish with some level of directness it, okay. it, it must be, the proximity must exist mm, mm. then you can even go extra ma extra further to also attack say the petroleum authority that even gave them the permit mm. then you can attack as well the the environmental agency okay. that gave them the permit okay. all these persons would be roped in okay it, so long as you can link them directly okay. into the 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 the, the, the losses that ha you have suffered but that is the watchword if it is so remote mm. that we are um, actions or inactions could not have led to the flood okay. or, or to the fire that engulfed your house, okay. then um, you may be stretching the law too far and mm. you probably might not succeed in that light. Okay. So you're saying that this lady should go to court? So I'm saying that this lady mm. would have to have a word with his landlord. Okay. If the landlord he's, is still he's other man. He's tried to have the If the landlord is other man, then unfortunately. And, and the landlady says, no, we had a two-year contract. Unfortunately, that way you may have to resolve this in court because really, as I've said, once a contract has been frustrated, mm. you cannot compel me to, co I mean, to perform a contract that cannot be performed. Okay. That is it's as simple as that. I see. The, the um, rules of equity. I mean, it, thank you. <laughs> and the, the minimum you can remember is um, when um, that government said that our, our doomsday was as a result of a shipwreck. Right. And then at, this, at another time, he said it was an act of God. Okay. Now, these were acts of frustration mm. that was being bandied around. Right. Except that, uh, of course, um, that person gave these as reasons for us not to have like So, in mm. other words, his position was that, at the time, the government, was that, because of these actions, mm -hmm. either by an act of God or by a ship, okay. you cannot blame the government for the non-availability of electricity right. in your houses. Now, this is how frustration works. Mm. And this is the basic law of frustration. Okay. So this say, in this same vein, bringing it here, if I am unable to live in this apartment mm. because of the rain, you cannot therefore accuse me of breaking or breaching the contract, the contract. that the two of you because have. Because it is not because habitable. It it's is simply not, not completely habitable. not workable. Okay. So you the, the not offer you made me, which I made consideration to, is not what it is anymore. Unfortunately. And therefore, it cannot work. Lawyer, it looks like, like your, your knowledge of the law is more than I, I, I thought. I'm learning. No, I'm no. Learning. You are clearly I'm, ahead I'm, of me. I'm learning. Thank you very much. I think I need much. to come for some Lawyer tutorial. Justice Abdullah is uh, a birthday boy. Today is his birthday. So, uh, I understand I'm having a birthday package here. Yes. Uh, we will give you your birthday <laughs> so package. I, we'll I'm hoping happy for that because my wife is waiting for it. And then, today is supposed to be a Ramadan. Okay, Even yes, tomorrow is. Yes, tomorrow is. You, want to, yeah. you want to send felicitations out quickly? Oh, naturally. No. I mean, I have a lot of... of course, first, the first one goes to the chief imam himself. Okay. Um, I think he's been the most wonderful chief imam mm. ever. Mm. I mean, a centenary with the, one of the best brains. Mm. I mean, uh, I'm having the cohesive... Um, and, um, and, and, and the cohesive development of this country right. in his heart. And I, I think I will single him out mm. and wish him the best of birthdays and the best of, because I think he just celebrated his right. birthday. Absolutely. And also, I, I met him on uh, his birthday. And I, I think he's the best person ever to happen to this country, right. um, mm. considering where we are. But of course, naturally, um, I wish my, my, um, my family uh, the best of Ramadan. Okay. And indeed, my, fam my friends as well. Mm. And everybody watching us, I think. Great. I think all of them should be having my birthday packages. Absolutely. Uh, have your birthday packages waiting. And it's Ramadan.